Hey everyone, welcome back to PR and Test Drive. Now over the past few days, I've been driving this Genesis GV70 electrified around and I've been quite impressed. This exterior looks fantastic and I really like the design. But I wanna talk about something a little bit different today. I wanna to go over 10 things you need to know before buying an electric car. So let's get started. All right, number one, different types of electrification. Now think of this as a spectrum. All the way to the left is a full gas car and all the way to the right is a full electric car. In between there are different types of hybrid system which we're gonna go through right now. The type that is closest to a gas car is the 48 volt mild hybrid system. A mild hybrid uses a very, very small battery pack with a small little motor that assists with turning on the engine, powering the accessories, and so on and so forth. That allows you to gain a little bit of acceleration boost off the line, as well as do things like have the engine switched off while coasting or slowing down, which means there's a little bit of efficiency gain there. Now, the second type is a traditional hybrid system. Think a Toyota Prius. These types of vehicles generally have a battery pack between the size of one kilowatt hour to three kilowatt hours. And these, electric, these hybrid electric vehicles gain efficiency through the regenerative braking system where when you slow down, the motors of the connected to the wheels actually turn into a generator and generates electricity back to the, back to the battery pack. It also allows you to do things like, again, turn off the engine while coasting, run, a, accelerate the first little bit on electric only so that the engine is only operating at the optimal times. And then the third type of hybrid vehicle is the plug-in hybrid. Now, plug-in hybrids are effectively just a hybrid system with a significantly larger battery pack. Generally speaking, we're talking 10 kilowatt hour to 25 kilowatt hours. These plug-in vehicles allow you to have a dedicated EV driving mode and allows for dedicated EV range. Now, these plug-in vehicles really do require you to plug in to maximize its benefit, maximize its benefits, because otherwise the car isn't doesn't have enough regenerative braking to recharge the battery completely. The caveat with a plug-in hybrid is that if you don't get to charge it all the time, if you don't get to utilize the charging function plugging it in, you actually get slightly worse efficiency compared to a regular hybrid variant because it's so much heavier. As I mentioned, the battery pack is like 10 to 20 times bigger, so heavier as well. And then of course, the final type of electrification is a full electric vehicle like the one we have here, the Genesis GV70 Electrified. Generally speaking, these electric vehicles have battery packs between 40 kilowatt hour to 200 kilowatt hour in, for example, a Hummer EV. So depending on what you need, whether if you have access to charging it, that will really determine what type of hybrid or what type of electrification you would want in your garage. Number two, dedicated EV platform versus adopted EV platform. Let's take the Genesis GV70 electrified as an example. This vehicle is an adopted platform from the GV70, whereas its little sibling, the GV60, is a built from the ground up EV vehicle. So the main difference between these two vehicles is the packaging and size. Of course, the exterior looks aside. The GV70 is a longer car but offers less interior space. And the reason for that is, look at this big transmission tunnel. Can't do anything about that. There's no storage underneath here because it's built into the frame. It's also apparent in the rear as well. Whereas the GV60, it's a lot, it feels a lot more open in the interior and is a lot more spacious because there's no transmission tunnel. It's just a flat floor. Number three, charge plug types. Here in North America in 2024, we generally have three types of charging standards. The first one is the J1772 standard, which we have here right now, and it's at the current moment for non-Tesla vehicles. You plug it in just like this in the vehicle. I'm having trouble, but anyway, that allows you to charge level one and level two. 
If you want to do level 3 charging, you gotta go with a CCS combo unit, which effectively combines the J1772 unit with the DC unit, which you'll find at fast charging stations. Now the third type is the Tesla plug, which a lot of you guys are really familiar with how that looks. That allows you to charge level 1, level 2, as well as level 3 on the same plug. The industry is also moving to that plug, which means that non-Tesla vehicles are going to soon have that type of plug, which we also call an ACS standard. All right, we've talked about the different types of charging plugs. Let's move on to number four and talk about the le three levels of charging speeds. So level one charging can be done using a mobile charger plugged into the wall. That gives you about 1.4 kilowatts of charging speed, which means it'll still take 68 hours to fully charge this thing. Stepping up to a level two, you can charge between seven kilowatts all the way up to 19.2 kilowatts, but generally speaking, you'll find level two charges between seven to 11 kilowatts. Bear in mind though, if you do plan to install a home charger, potentially set aside some money in case you need to upgrade your electric panel. Level three charging is only done using public DC fast charging stations ranges from 50 kilowatts all the way to 350 kilowatts. However, in my area, I've seen only up to about 180 kilowatts. There may be faster than even 350 around the world. I'm not too sure. Those charging stations allow you to charge the car as fast as humanly possible for your road trips or long journeys. However, bear in mind that a, a 150 kilowatt charging station doesn't always charge at 150 kilowatts. It really just depends on your car's temperature, on the station itself, a lot of different variables. So make sure to leave yourself some room when you're planning on your long trips. All right, now that we're on the road, let's talk about number five, which is efficiency. Now, typically with an internal combustion engine vehicle, you can expect better fuel economy or efficiency on the highway and less efficiency in the city. Because you're in the city, you're slowing down, stopping, accelerating, doing all that stuff. But on the contrary, with an electric car, it's actually more efficient to drive it in the city rather than on the highway. And the main reason for that is because of the regen braking. With the regen braking, you're actually recharging the batteries whenever you're slowing down. And so you are able to maintain the highest level of efficiency at the lower speeds, which means less wind resistance. Alternatively, on the highway, it's less efficient because the, the wind resistance become a bigger impact. Number six, battery health. How can we maintain the maximum battery health for a longer period of time. Now there are a few tips to that. Tip number one would be to not fully charge your battery on a daily basis. If you can set your battery max battery charge level to about 80%, that could potentially make your battery last longer. The second thing is to precondition your battery before charging. Preconditioning allows the battery to get itself to its optimized optimal charging behavior, warming the battery up potentially or cooling the battery down potentially to absorb the fastest charging speeds as well as potentially help your battery last longer in terms of battery health, of course. And this would be especially applied when you're trying to DC fast charge. Number three would be to keep your vehicle plugged in in the winter in cold temperatures, even if it's charged. Now the reason for that is that the charger can actually trickle charge the battery to keep it at a better temperature, which in turn allows for potentially better or longer lasting of good battery health. Number seven, regen braking. Regen braking is probably one of the single biggest thing that you notice driving an electric car. It slows down your vehicle using the electric motors instead of your brakes. Most cars, most electric cars have different levels of regen braking that you can choose. Like this one, I can just use the paddle shifter here to adjust my level of regen braking. I also have one pedal drive that slows me down and come to a complete stop as well. 
other cars may not have as many levels or may not have different levels of regen braking to choose from, so something to take note there. Number eight, maintenance and repair costs. In terms of maintenance, you can expect lower maintenance costs compared to an internal combustion engine vehicle. Because, for example, you don't have to do oil changes, you also don't have to do brake jobs as frequent. As mentioned, an electric vehicle has regen braking, which means the electric motors is doing most of the heavy lifting in terms of slowing your vehicle down, which means that your brake wear, brake pad wear, brake rotor wear is significantly lower. However, in terms of tires, your tire wear should increase a little bit just because the fact that an electric vehicle is generally way more heavy compared to an equivalent traditional internal combustion engine vehicle. Now, in terms of repair cost, however, even though an electric car has way less components, way less parts than an internal combustion engine, each of those parts may be more expensive, especially the battery pack. If, knock on wood, you get into an accident that involves damaging your battery pack, your bill is gonna cost you tens of thousands of dollars. Which brings me to point number nine, insurance costs. In terms of insurance costs, because the repair damage, repair cost is so much higher than an equivalent internal combustion vehicle, your insurance cost is generally also gonna be a bit more expensive. So again, something to note there. And lastly, the coolest thing about an electric car is its acceleration. There's no one behind me here. So let's see what 480 something horsepower gets me. <sighs> Extremely fast. I forgot to press the boost button, but I pressed it after I took off and it still chirped the wheels. So, tons of fun accelerating in an electric car, especially this GV70 with so much horsepower. But here you go. These are the 10 things you need to know about an electric car or consider before getting one. Thank you for watching. Comment down below whether you like this style of video and we'll see you in the next one.